Hi guys, follow me on Instagram to never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I am driving this. This is the Ferrari Portofino M. This is to unlock the car. This is to lock the car. This is to open the boot and this is for the lights. Anyways, this is the Portofino M. M stands for Modificata, something like that which actually means modified. You can just call it the midlife facelift of this car. However, just saying a facelift to this car is actually not doing justice to it because there are a lot of changes. Firstly, there are aluminum slats on the grill. Let's do one thing. Let's open the engine bay right away. It is going to be super duper 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 hot. My goodness, it's like crazy hot. So I have to really hunt. And there it is. Obviously, hydraulic struts. There opens the engine bay. Engine bay is actually quite big. The engine is more towards the cabin because this is the front mid engine. Lovely red covering and Ferrari written there. Of course, there's insulation right here, and you see these vents. They have been added now. So let's just shut this for a moment. Okay, you have to push it down. Now those are the vents which have been added to this car. I think it looks absolutely gorgeous. It gets new air intakes as well. Very aggressive ones. So you can see that here around the lights, and the lights are also very beautiful. Obviously, projector setup, all LED units. Ferrari logo right there. I think it looks really nice in this grey colour. Specifically, you get front parking sensors, of course, multiple one of those, and there's a front parking camera. That is the prancing horse in chrome. Meanwhile, let's come to this side. I actually always rotate from that side, but this time we're going to rotate from this side because this is obviously a left-hand drive. From the side, it looks really very nice and sexy. This is a hard top. We're going to put the top down in a bit, but the wheels look. Stunning indeed. Obviously, carbon ceramic disc because Ferrari does not do regular disc at all. 245, 20 is the size of the tire. Red colored Brembo brake calipers, of course. And there is the indicator on the side. Now, these air vents have been added. That is to reduce the drag around the wheels. That's again fantastic. Rear tire size obviously happens to be slightly bigger as well. 285, 35, 20. And here I'm going to open the boot straight away because the boot is kind of useless. I think it is too. Where is the button? Yeah, there's the button. There it opens. It is around 296 liters or so. But because of the hood mechanism, there is no space. I just had to stuff my bag somehow. There's another bag on the inside wherein you can keep stuff. And uh, this is actually the kit. And there's a light placement here. You can press this button to open the seat as well. Let's do one thing. Let's actually you know put the roof down. But this is manual. Yeah, that's right. This is manual. It should have been powered, of course. Just press a button. Okay, the key is in my pocket. That's why it's making this sound right now. So here we're going to get inside and I'm going to put the roof down, which means I press this button and there, firstly the windows will go down and then this roof will fold back. It takes 14 seconds for all this to happen and you can actually do it till a speed of 40 kilometers per hour. Yeah. So while in motion, this can be done, which is actually a nice thing and there it's going to shut. Once this happens, obviously the boot space is further compromised. I'm going to put the windows down. So I can show you, obviously we get frameless doors which look fantastic and now the car looks super duper amazing with the roof down. What do you think guys? If you like the car, I <laughs> gave a like to this video. What a lovely looking car, fantastic. Okay, you can call it the entry level Ferrari. If entry level is a word you can use for a Ferrari, I don't think you can. That's completely wrong to do so. The hood is nice and long and the car is beautiful. Specifically speaking, at the rear, I love the way the round tail lights, a Ferrari signature has been used. But you need to notice one thing, okay, the exhausts are now shorter, I believe, because uh, it doesn't have a silencer or something of that sort. That's the reason they have given it a nice big diffuser. Pestle Khan's fingers of truth will never is themselves because obviously these are real exhausts and they're super duper loud. Here, you can see the underbody, I don't know if you can. There you go. Yeah, massively wide tires. Very aerodynamic bits on this car, a lot of aerodynamic bits actually. And there is a Ferrari logo. It says Ferrari here, there's a light right there. And the reverse parking camera is placed there. Now, of course, it gets cameras almost everywhere it has to. That's the reason you get a camera here as well. Yeah, there you see a camera. Gets a 360 degree parking camera. Nice Ferrari logo right there. And you can see the seats are very nice. Okay, no adjustable headrest because these are sporty seats. Really sporty. Red colored. Beautiful. And in order to go behind, you can just press this button and kind of push it. Uh, you don't have to push it. It automatically goes ahead and... Compared to the California, the car this car has replaced, 
this five centimeters more of room <laughs> that's like nothing my gopro is lying right now there you can see isofix child seat mounts this actually opens so if you want to carry longer items that is a possibility as well but i am not too sure <laughs> how much you can carry <clears throat> so beautiful seats second row of seats are completely useless so you can call it 2 plus 2 but it's only 2 no plus 2 here because you can't fit anybody i just push it behind like this and there it goes back so beautiful so nice under thigh support not an issue you can actually increase under thigh support where's the button okay it should be somewhere here okay let it go back all the way lot of buttons here and there this is actually i think to go into probably the temperature mode for the seats but that's something we'll discover later i don't know why that seems a little unfinished because that's something i even saw in the roma and nice pedals like really very nice ones this is actually there to open the hood of the vehicle this is the parking brake uh, electric parking brake auto park function is actually for the parking not automatically parking but for the electric parking brake these are the controls for the lights automatic lights and stuff like that now you get electric adjust for the steering wheel both for reach as well as rake which is very easy to operate but we'll come to this menu in a bit because i need to go to the other side yes there is something worth seeing on the co passenger side as well like i told you no room here at all nice lever to open the doors as well so first and foremost you get a fire extinguisher right there ferrari written here jbl professional speakers really nice audio quality electric adjust obviously powered seats at the front and here you get a display yeah there is actually a display here which i'm not too sure if can be seen now it can be seen so this is actually a touch display and you can actually get into media and you can also get into navigation so a lot of information here on offer but most importantly i mean vda tells you exactly what mode it is in and how are the various parameters of the vehicle and as you keep changing stuff it shows you what is the difference in various modes a slew of electronics in this car but the co passenger will obviously want to see this g force meter rpm meter which is the gear along with the speedometer touch i believe this might be optional though portofino m written here just in case the co passenger forgets which car he she is in now nice round vents very aircraft style but in order to close them this is actually the lever yeah you don't just rotate it like that to close it same here as well same is the case like everywhere now here there's some storage space at least below the front center armrest there's some storage space along with a usb charging socket there are actually two usb charging sockets these are the regular ones not the usb c there's a light placement along with a 12 volt charging socket as well this is the sos button and this is for the power window control this is for the hazard light launch control automatic for the gearbox this is to get into reverse this is to open or close the sun roof rather the roof rather the top of the vehicle so convertible to non convertible using this button of course and there's a dummy slot here why is there a dummy slot that is actually for the key which perfectly slots in right there that's really sweet these are the controls for the air conditioning you get dual zone climate control system this is a 10.25 inch screen which is a little laggy not the fastest around ferrari written right there and of course controls for this screen are placed right here now there are a couple of buttons parking sensors and camera these are actually hidden i'm seeing it for the very first time and uh, that's about it not much here right let's do one thing let's get behind get into performance yeah that is the data you see which is actually quite fantastic the glove box is small it's not really big as such and let's get outside now this is actually the lever to open the door of the vehicle and you see this uh, triangle well it has got adas systems which basically mean that there is a blind spot monitor which not only blinks but also makes sound now you can configure a lot of these things inside this car but first i will show you the dashboard now this is the last generation ferrari dashboard not the one which is shared with the roma the roma obviously gets touch controls for a lot of settings along with the sf90 steering wheel which is missing here memory settings for the driver three people settings can be saved this is to adjust the outside rear view mirrors and here are a lot of buttons now this is for cruise control this is for lane departure warning i believe and this is to increase or decrease the speed of the cruise control system first things first what we are going to do is we are going to get back first and foremost i need to close the door of the car it says push to close and there it says portofino m status i can browse using this here okay so first we'll get into status which actually tells me what is the temperature of the engine and 
the oil and stuff like that along with the tire pressure monitor and this is for the ADAS system it also tells me what is the speed limit in a particular zone I mean it has roadside detection as well let's come behind and let's get into the trip okay now there are twin trip meters which tells you what is the top speed average speed travel distance travel time as well as the range below here obviously you get the fuel meter along with the digital speedometer and uh, it also tells you trip data meanwhile let's get into the VDA which you could see on the right side as well it tells you exactly what is the setting you are driving the car on and what is the level of electronic intervention which is going to happen the more the bar is the lesser is the intervention I believe and let's get behind from here so now we are going to get into the turbo mode which tells you how much turbo pressure is there and what is the turbo response like along with the turbo efficiency that's like fantastic who needs so much data this is not a formula one car and here you can get into a lot of settings first and foremost i'm going to get into adas blind spot detection traffic sign recognition predictive braking automatic high beam lane departure warning all this is there in this menu because obviously it's got a slew of adas systems which actually work well and then you can decide how you want the sensitivity to be early late whatever whatever automatic high beam predictive braking yeah that's right so it has got like automatic emergency braking um, forward collision warning all the usual things and then you can obviously get into the right display as well now the right display is here i can decide if i want a digital speedometer or i want an analog one obviously the analog one looks better so i'm just going to keep it analog for a moment okay turn off engine why should i turn off engine i'm just going to rev and just going to make that shut okay you get a tachometer in the center which is a yellow colored one an analog one along with a gear position indicator as well a nice big tachometer which is fantastic to be honest I love the way the instrument cluster has been done in three portions telltale lights are almost everywhere nice Ferrari steering wheel this is to turn on the car this is for bumpy road mode which does not work in comfort or wet mode it only works in sport and race mode you know why because in comfort mode it's already I think in bumpy road mode so if I get into sport and I press this button there it says bumpy road yeah thank you so much now this is for high beam yeah pass by switch okay these are the controls for the lights there you see I am going from low beam to high beam it's actually quite easy to operate this yeah very easy to operate this this is for voice command this is to pick up a call this is the manatee no i don't know i don't know how i can't just pronounce this word but this is actually for the dry mode selector they've added race mode now it was not there earlier i think esc is also esc off is also been added right now recently these are the controls for the wipers and in order to use the wipers it's quite easy there you see the wipers they work really well of course and then you can obviously press this button to add some spray <laughs> this is for the indicators now if you press it softly it's going to blink for three times and then it's going to shut so indicators on the steering wheel and this obviously blinks as you build the revs inside the car steering feels nice to hold the horn the horn is also nice it gets this flat bottom as well carbon fiber finish beautiful steering wheel the paddles could have been a little longer because they don't move along with the steering wheel of course but they are beautiful to operate now this is a beautiful screen but it's not very responsive we are in the reverse parking camera at the moment you can see that okay it gets a 360 degree parking camera i can press some buttons to get into various modes now this is the front view of course and this view wherein i can decide how i want the adaptive guidelines as well so i'm just going to put it in a normal one and this is for the beautiful camera system so check this out okay i'm going to press this button and yeah now i can decide how i want to see uh, what view i want to see of the car so this is again an amazing view can you see that it's so fantastic in fact i want to press this and i want to get into another view here oh my goodness this is so much like a bmw x uh, i mean like what's been seen in bmw as well as in land rovers of late fantastic system really very nice to operate and overall the system is actually quite easy i was like okay it's going to be a little complex but no it's super easy because all the menus are here radio media navigation phone comfort and settings we get into comfort because it has actually got ventilated and heated seats although it's a little difficult to get into it now ventilation has been turned on you can hear a bit of the noise so i'm just going to turn it off for the moment yeah it's a nice screen but it could have been a little fast it's not very fluid or the fastest in terms of response that's something which i need to work on and here obviously i can operate all this the screen can be worked from these controls as well obviously it's a touch screen as well audio system is actually fantastic let's get into home and let's play a radio right away audio quality is fantastic you obviously get an auto dimming inside your view mirror these are the controls for the lights this is to lock the vehicle this is for stop start system and this is a button i don't understand what it means so if you guys know please let me know now here there's no mirror but you can keep your car registration document there and there is of course a mirror on the other side because the co-passenger is obviously going to do makeup of course when they are inside this car 
I think the interior is quite nice. I like it more than the Romas because you know physical controls are really very nice. And just turn off the car, and then when you turn it on, now there it says Ferrari and Portofino on the left. We're going to turn it on, and there it absolutely rose to life. All right, let's do one thing. Let's start driving right away. Right, we're all set to go. Turning on the car. Absolutely rose to life. <laughs> all right. So what we are going to do is there's this small screen. I don't know how much of it you guys can see. Okay, I will change it later. Anyways, air conditioning completely off. Here we get into race mode straight away, and we get into drive. Now we have to turn off the handbrake. Handbrake turned off. Another thing is we get out of automatic. We get into manual. Then we press launch, left foot on the brake, right foot on the actuator, revving the motor, launch control active around 2800 RPM. Absolute beast acceleration like crazy. It says 100% turbo response and that noise is actually off, lane keep assist. So I have actually turned on the ADAS systems. That is a speed warning which is ringing right now. But the acceleration is absolutely stunning. So compared to the older Portofino, the new one has 20 horsepower or PS more. Well, because it has the same spec as the Roma which you were driving recently. Around the corners it's really nice but you can feel a bit of the weight curtsy off. Okay, you can see the balance going a bit but that, oh my god. Yeah, so that added weight obviously when compared to the Roma is because this is a hard top and that's why there's some weight at the rear. That said, acceleration is really very brutal. Acceleration has improved by 0.05 seconds to go from 0 to 100 km per hour in 3.45 seconds. The older model used to do it in 3.5 seconds. That courtesy of the 20 increase in power. So this one is now producing 620 horsepower at 5750 RPM, going all the way to 7500 RPM. And the result is that it has actually cut one second in the 0 to 200 km per hour time which comes up in 9.8 seconds which is blisteringly quick to be very honest with you guys acceleration is amazing this engine has won 14 international engine of the year awards because of the way it performs like get onto the gas and yeah it goes a bit sideways because all the power going to the rear wheels pulls so hard and fast and sounds really nice and loud I mean, it could be a little bit more melody, but still, it's absolutely loud the way this engine sounds. Performance is surreal. It's stunning to say the least. There's so much grunt on offer from this engine. Really very pleasing. What an engine. Launch control works fantastically well. And there is a Lambo right in front of us, which is going to take a right turn. Yeah, that is a Hurafa Spider. And around the corners, there's body roll. And then we have come to a dead end because there is, of course, dust covered on that road so we just have to take a reverse get into reverse and here we go this camera actually comes in a lot of use actually this engine has almost no lag zero lag nil nada zilch lag how have they managed that very easy ferrari is master is in engineering and of course in engines and RPM red lines. So I was telling you 620 horsepower, which comes in at a rather low 5750 RPM for an engine which revs so much and peaks till 7500 RPM. Launch active, left foot on the brake. Here we go. Rear wheels are definitely scrambling for traction. So I was telling you the torque output, which is an absolute impressive 760 Newton meters, comes in at just 3000 RPM and stays there till. 5750 RPM when the peak power builds in and the result is performance is absolutely breathtaking without a doubt I mean there's so much grunt on offer this is a car which pulls so strongly like get on the gas it twitches at the rear because obviously too much power going to the rear wheels and then seven and a half thousand RPM red line braking performance is stupendous they've also worked on the brakes so yeah here we stop actually the brakes are such now that the first 50% 
very progressive and after that it's very ag <laughs> aggressive as such so the gearbox is an 8 speed unit again the chassis the engine the gearbox everything is shared with the roma when talking about the roma how can i forget that uh, the gearbox actually comes from the sf90 stradale yeah shares a lot of inspiration from it and then I love the way the body control is actually quite nice but still yes there is some amount of body roll which is natural and expected considering that uh, you know this is not about being a track machine as much as it's about being a GT a grand tourer where it absolutely excels and I love the way the engine downshifts with so much aggression launch active left foot on the brake right from the accelerator Did you notice the car actually goes right and left scrambling for traction and for grip but Ferrari has got so many electronics here to make sure that the car points in the right direction at all the times and then again we have come to a dead end no problemo because actually very maneuverable very drivable also turbo lag is not there in this car zero nil nada turbo lag that's how well contained the turbo lag is Yeah, you know what Ferrari is actually done. Earlier this car used to get a 7 speed dual clutch. Now it gets an 8 speed dual clutch. So because of the 8 gear, they have a uh, higher 8 uh, gear for obviously cruising. And that is the reason why this car is actually having closer stack ratios from 1st to 7th. The result is it accelerates even more brutally than you would expect. Okay, now we're just going to go on the right side. I love the way the car is so easy to drive at lower speeds but when you go bonkers with the acceleration now it absolutely flies beautiful pinpoint accurate it is not like the F8 of course but still it is so much fun definitely a ferrari in the real sense in the way it performs in the way it sounds as well what a beauty and then it's so much fun using the paddle shifters now there are five drive modes on offer the portofino now also gets race in which we are driving at the moment there's wet there's comfort there's sport there's race and there's esc off esc off is more of a drift mode and the higher the modes you go in the more aggressive the car gets and even not only in terms of engine performance but also in terms of the way the chassis is just so much more dynamic launch control active left foot on the brake here we go If you notice the car actually goes right and left because of so much power and torque going to the rear wheels. Now they have a new speed sensor in the turbos to be able to monitor the speed of the turbos resulting in the turbo now spinning 5000 rpm higher. That results in obviously better performance, better acceleration as well. And the steering wheel is really nice and sharp but you need to get used to the way it is so fast off center. But once you get used to it you really enjoy it because <laughs> I love driving this car because it is just so involving in spite of the fact that it is an entry level Ferrari I don't know even if a word like entry level exists for a Ferrari but <laughs> uh, let's do one thing let's actually come into sport mode and in sport mode obviously the traction control will be slightly more intervening ensuring that it doesn't go right and left and I can see the turbo response is always on point now because of the slew of electronic systems in this car it always ensures that you are always pointing it in the right direction here we are getting to auto mode it really wants to downshift very aggressively blips the throttle as well doesn't hesitate one bit to give you the gear you're looking for what a gearbox what an engine and the motor redline so quickly it revs super duper fast this is an engine which doesn't hesitate one bit to go to the 7500 redline and doesn't feel like a turbocharger trust me like that's what i meant it doesn't feel like a turbocharger engine trust me nobody does engines better than ferrari ferrari is absolutely nailed it when it comes to the engine of this portofino because this engine is a 3.9 liter twin turbo unit it's an 8 cylinder v8 of course which is also shared with the roma as well as the f8 triboto and a host of other cars from the ferrari lineup and trust me performance you will never want more for regular city driving out on the track of course it could be more dynamic but then the engine is sort of in the wrong place if you want the engine in the right place rear mid engine with the f8 triboto of course I always have to intervene and downshift because when I do I really enjoy pushing this car and I love the way it's so freaking amazing in all the way in terms of driving dynamics because the steering is so nice and responsive and in spite of the fact that this is a sports car without a lift function of course 
I cannot deny the fact that the ride is also very nice. So I've been driving this car all around Dubai in smaller roads, over breakers and whatnot. It doesn't have any issue over bad bumps. I mean, in terms of ground clearance, and obviously the suspension is also very compliant on this car. So ride quality is fantastic without a doubt. But as an overall package, this is a very practical, usable Ferrari. Of course, which is also a convertible, which is another USP. Prices around rupees four crores. Sits right alongside the Roma, of course. Between this and the Roma, which one would you choose? Well, I would choose the Roma because I find the Roma's interior is just so freaking good. Yeah, I think all that sand has got into the brake disc. We'll do one thing. We'll put the roof down, and then we are going to launch it. With the roof down, of course, there's a lot of wind in the hair because of which I can't really talk much. I'm gonna shout right now. It also gets a gasoline particulate filter. You can call it something like a DPF, which results in even better bottom end performance. And of course, it has a very strong bottom end, stupendous top end. I mean, there is grunt throughout the rev range, and right now, obviously, lane departure warning is working fantastically well. What a car! Really, very enjoyable. Trust me, Ferrari nails. Ferrari nails all its cars by offering stupendous performance, a steering which is joy, and yet this is a very, very, very easy and accessible car. Andrea and Ferrari, my foot! This is pure fun, joy, and definitely this engine is something which puts a massive smile on your face as well. So, guys, this is my vlog of the Ferrari Portofino. If you like it, make sure to give the thumbs up, that's the like button, and also subscribe to the channel. I will see you guys in the next video real soon. By the way, uh, launch control does not work in auto mode of the gearbox. You have to. in manual mode fuel efficiency is somewhere between 2 to 5 kilometers per liter depending on your driving style now i'm going to try something very different so i am right now in 7th gear okay i am trying to get into 8th gear which i can manage at just a speed of 70 kilometers per hour in 8th gear the rpm needle is ticking at just slightly above 1000 rpm That's how cool. Okay, it's at 67 in 8. Now it downshifts to 7. That's how cool and calm this car is in terms of the way the engine is. Just so calm. Look at that. Okay, blind spot monitor is on, and if I actually press any of the button, it makes a sound as well to tell me that there's someone there. So there are a lot of sounds which come from the ADAS system, which is also quite nice. That's it. The vlog is over. क्या देख रहे हो? Bye bye.